from a CEO of our company has written a really interesting piece on, on how investors are looking at valuations and it's not about when the exit will happen uh, or when the value will be created but how much value will actually be created. That seems to be the question at this point in time. How are you looking at this? I think, you know, uh, this is a cyclical game. At the end of the day, things will go up and down. But India specifically, if you will look at the potential of the market, I think there are 150 million healthy, active internet users in the country. Yeah. You know, if you look at, let's say, Flipkart's latest valuation of $15 billion at the 700 million valuation, uh, is it high? Possibly. But could it go higher? For sure. I think they have no more than 20, 30 million customers and this is a 1.2 billion person market. Mm. So I think people like Tiger, SoftBank, they understand from markets like US, Japan, China that the long term game here is a very large market and mm. I think that's what they're playing. Now those yeah. of us who run legacy companies <laughs> say, say, you know, how much revenue do you have and how much profit do you have? I'm a boring uh, old fart who thinks about things in long term, right? So we've been at this for 30 years and what we're trying to do is to build, or certainly uh, let me personalize it, what I'm interested in is building a long-term enduring brand, not in and out, right? Not exit, start another one. I'm not a serial entrepreneur. Right. And that so is very important in the context of what revenues and profits are because part of the problem with a lot of the internet-based models, in fact, I spoke to somebody this morning, somebody known to one of you on this panel who mm. said, you know, I'm interested in the old-fashioned things, yeah. revenue and profits. Sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, but at the end of the day, that's what it is going to boil down to. Yes, I mean, exactly. whether your, yeah. your, your new economy, Absolutely. old economy, old-fashioned, new fashion, that's what it's going to boil down to. You have and to put money on the yeah, table. And I'm, I must it is going to be this. about the bottom line and the top line. Yeah, I think the difference... Or not just about the top line. Yeah, I think the difference in traditional businesses and the internet businesses are, is that I think internet companies start off by trying to solve a problem first. Eventually, they have, they will figure out a business model because they end up solving problems that exist today in a much better way, using new distribution online, on top of which they'll disrupt business models and create new models. And I think for that, you need three, four, five years to figure out, especially in a market like India that's so early. If you look at Facebook, Instagram, they took six, seven, eight years to get a healthy top line. You know, what I find a little bit um, worrying uh, still is that I just don't hear enough entrepreneurs say, I want to build a brand that users love. Yeah. I just don't hear that language. I hear people say, I want GMV and I want contribution margin. I was a finance woman and I get the numbers. But the reality of this thing is none of those numbers will ever, ever happen in a sustainable way unless and until we are building brands that users love. Is that more India specific? I just don't see it here in India ever. Why is that? That's why, why is that, you think? I think, I think because we got very early in our lives into a very, very quick set of series A, B, C type uh, cycles. Mm. And you know, uh, we're a two and a half year old company, we have three series behind us, we have $50 million. It's not normal. It's not normal. You know, the other challenge that I want to ask you about that, Abhay, is how do you build a global corporation? And, and you know, none of you uh, are currently aspiring only to cater to the Indian market. In fact, from the start, uh, Inmobi was positioned as a global corporation. Kevin, you're thinking of taking hike to other emerging markets as well. And Chuchi, I don't know whether Lime Road is headed in that direction also. But, you know, the challenge of building a global corporation today. Our route to globalization is to go to the U.S. Mm. And... And I actually fundamentally think that India is actually not like US. India is much more like China. And problem is that you don't understand China, so you try and think of the things that you understand. So try and see if you can take an emerging market route, because mm. Inmobi actually took an emerging market route. We mm. never entered US. But so what's the market that's most like India? In your China. China. Any business model that is starting in India, any, and I can state that with 100% conviction, other than Aadhaar and <laughs> you know more fundamental yeah. ones, any business model that is starting in India on the uh, internet space, there is a precedence of that in China. In China. It's a $600 million mobile first country. Yeah. There's only one in the world which has played the card and it has a self, self-contained self ecosystem. Mm. There's a search player, there's a social player, there's a chat player, there's a commerce yeah. player. Yeah. It's a perfect replica of a global world. That's right. That's a mobile first world. So. But, but, but let me ask you this. Uh, Martin Sarrell, you know, we're talking about disruption and we're talking about disruptive business models and you've often said that the likes of Facebook and uh, and Google yeah. are, 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 are 
media companies masquerading as tech well, companies so and, and they're really frenemies. Like so <laughs> no, they are. Well, they are. I mean, everybody has frenemies. Uh, what we're continuously doing is is three things. One is getting our businesses to move in terms of traditional businesses to move in terms of digital activities. Secondly, to take our digital leaders and grow them faster. And thirdly, to experiment. So we're, we're a strategic VC. We're a strategic venture capitalist. So we, we're not as expensive as the classic VCs. <laughs> we take a long-term view because we don't have to get out. Okay, so let me get wrap-up comments from, uh, from each of you. And Trudy, let me start by asking you, what is it? Uh, you know, startups that are watching this show, and you've, you've sort of been around for a while now, so what is it that you would focus on as you go about building Lime Road, and what is the advice that you would give? Firstly, it's never been a better time to be an Indian. It's never been a better time to take risks in India. Uh, it's, uh, if, you, if you want to go do it, do it, because... Frankly, the one thing as a country, as a culture, and I come from a Bengali family, uh, you know, one thing that we've learned as uh, an Indian ecosystem uh, is to be okay with failures. David? Yeah, I echo that. I think, you know, after failure, there's not a full stop, there's a comma. Mm. You know, think five years ahead of everybody else and stay true to your vision. Be fearful if you're going fast enough. I mean, uh, certainly... If we think we're going fast enough, then you haven't seen how fast the world is moving. Mm. Uh, we are very, very clear and aware that there is a uh, uh, there's a Chinese invasion, whether it is through capital, whether it is they starting their own JVs here, whether they're starting to do, and I know Group M has a JV with a Chinese company in India, or whether they're starting to do uh, uh, set up their own offices here. No, but what's the thing that, that, that uh, worries you most? So I think speed. Uh, I think speed was not, not, being fast. not being fast enough and not being fast enough in getting great product out. Yeah. So I think when you're competing against big American and Chinese companies starting off five, six years later, yeah. speed is key. Yeah. Not I, think, I think what I fear at this point in time is complacency. Right. Yeah, we, because we've reached a certain scale and we've reached a certain pinnacle that you can now start to say, okay, you know, this is, hmm. this is good. But how do you keep reinventing your own ambitions yeah. mm -hmm. to be bigger than where you are and yeah. keep moving is, is the... No, I think I'd agree, could. actually. I think when you look back, you wish you'd gone faster. Really wish you'd embraced certain things that you were worried about. Might have been valuations. Yeah. It might have been yeah. jumping where other people weren't prepared to jump. One other important message that's come through from this panel is: don't just obsess about the U.S., but also think about what's happening in China. Appreciate you joining us here on this Young Tech special. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.